So excited for this. Uh, we're almost rounding the corner to be at the end of this series called Refresh. We started this on the very first day of the year. The very first day of the year was a Sunday morning, and it was like so much storm had happened the night before. Everyone's power was out. It was absolutely crazy. Still, a bunch of people were able to like get out of the branches, out of their front yard, and able to make it to church. And we've been in this idea around refresh. We need refreshment. We want refreshment. And we, it's all about like that connection. Like, because you're on your, everyone understands on their computer or on their phone, you cannot refresh that open page unless you have a good connection. How much more so that we can't get the refreshment that we're looking for in life if we're not connected to the one who gives us the refreshment, right? Amen. Come on, this is important. So we're in part four of our series called Refresh, and this is kind of the idea around is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will. Everyone say His will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Today's message, this is actually, this one's really special to me. Uh, This message right here um, is for the whole year, I believe. It's for the whole, for the whole year. For the rest of this year, I think it's going to be a standout. We started, Tiffany and I started pastoring uh, just over 10 years ago. We had a 10-year celebration. You guys really swept us off our feet for that, by the way. Thank you so much. The church blessed our socks off. That was back in October, and we had our 10-year anniversary. So we had, we've been pastoring 10 years. 10 years, uh, and we changed the name of the church. The church already existed, but we changed the name to Lifeline because we felt like the Lord had had dealt with us in a a different way about how we were going to relate to the community, how we were going to be involved with the community. And it was that, that name, we wanted people to see that name from the very beginning and know that that was a part of our identity, that we wanted to be a lifeline for people. Same gospel, you know, like we came in, we, we were young, we were, we're young now, we were young then, I'll tell you that. We didn't know nothing, come on, we didn't know nothing. We were like, we're going to pre- we're going to like just, I'm going to sit here with the Bible and just read it, all right, that's the best I can do for you. I didn't know nothing, we, Tiffany knew a lot, let's, let's be honest, she knew plenty. I didn't know nothing, but it's the same gospel, it's the same basic essential elements of Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and we believe in him and, and take him on, and he's our salvation. But the way that we interact with our community, we, we felt had to change. We couldn't just play church as normal. We couldn't just keep the status quo. We couldn't just play patty cake church and just pretend everything was going to be fine when there's people out there dying, hurting, lost, lonely, and we had to reevaluate. And for Tiffany and I both, we, be- we believe that um, God started to give us a word or, or started to I don't know if that's the way I want to say it, but he started to deal with us in a different way. And he he gave us this scripture that started to articulate the way that we saw things happening. It comes out of Isaiah 54. It says this, enlarge your house, build an addition, (laughs) spread out your home, which I could just, it's not in my notes, but I just, every phrase here is powerful to me because when I think of home and he's saying, hey, you're safe here, I want you to feel safe. I want you to expand where you feel safe. I want you to go outside of your comfort zone. I want you to go outside. I want you to stretch out, but I cannot linger. I have to keep going. There's good stuff here. <laughs> Got to keep going. He said this, spare no expense. Oh, that one I have to stop. Spare no expense. He says this vision is going to require sacrifice. When you're stretching, when you're growing, when you're expanding your house, this is going to cost, this is going to cost you. And I'm, this is how God's dealing with me, with, with Tiffany we have a family, you know, we've got kids, you know, we had our own thing, but God's saying, hey, I need you to think bigger. And I know it's a little scary, but I, 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 you've got to listen to me because people are out there, they're dying without Jesus. They're dying without the Lord and you have to expand your tent. You have to expand your house. This vision is gonna be a sacrifice and it says this, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. So I think God's soon and my soon are two different soons, but that's all right. That's all right. I can deal with his timing. It's cool. He says, your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle ruined cities. Um, I do you a disservice, church. I do you a disservice if I don't tell you our intentions. Our intentions here at Lifeline Church is to grow. We intend to grow. We intend to be bursting at the seams. We intend to expand our house. We intend to extend beyond one service, beyond one building, beyond this building, beyond one location, beyond one city. God has put a burden in my heart, and if it takes me the rest of my life, I am assured in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit, that what God said is true and accurate. His promises are yes and amen. 
beyond one city. And you need to know that because when you invest your time, your treasure, and your talent into this house, you ought to know what God is asking, where God is asking this house to go. He's asking us to go highways, byways, inviting people near and far into this place. You deserve to know what's going to happen. And it's happening even now. It makes me think of this man in the Bible named Jabez. So let's crack open our Bibles here and talk about this man, Jabez. Uh, For some of you might know, if you grew up in church, Jabez, he had the the prayer of Jabez. It's like this whole big thing. I didn't grow up in church, so some of these like churchy sayings are new to me, which is fun because I get to kind of go back to that. The prayer of Jabez. The first thing I want to tell you about uh, Jabez that you might not know, Jabez, a funny name, right? But in the Bible, names have meanings. Anybody know what Jabez name means? Pain. It means pain. Jabez means pain. His mom named him pain. Come on, somebody. Come on, mom. Yeah, everybody wants to name their kid Jabez now. You're like, yeah, that's right. I feel that. But, but think about it like in the house. Think about Jabez meaning pain, and you're like, hey, pain, eat your dinner. Pain, eat your dinner. Pain, get off the Nintendo. Pain, I need you to clean your room. Pain, pain. Pain, I'm going to just call him pain from now on. Pain had a prayer. Jabez had a prayer, and it went like this. So it's going to make even more sense now that we read the scripture. Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 4, he was the one, pain, who prayed to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all this trouble and say it with me, pain. Pain. What was he doing right there? You might just be thinking, oh, that's a weird thing to pray. He's like, keep me from pain. I guess that's good. What he was praying was, Lord, I want out of this label. I want out of this identity that's been put on me of pain. Lord, keep me from this pain. Some of y'all never knew that. It's very important to know that Jabez was praying himself out of the status quo of what was always meant to be, of what was always supposed to be. He's saying, God, I know you've destined me for more than this. Expand me, stretch me, use me to an even greater extent. Wouldn't that be our our prayer, church? Expand me, grow me, use me to, to do even more than I think I could do. Free me from this label of just being average, ordinary, live a, or whatever, and not ever walking into my purpose not ever knowing my, my true calling and knowing what it feels like to be tired at the end of the day and think, man, I really, I really went for my calling today. I really went for my purpose today. It's a whole different, it's a whole different three. Jabez wanted to be free from his label. He wanted to be free from the status quo. And God granted him his request. It's important to note that too. God is a God who will answer a prayer just like that one. So if that's you, church, if you're ready to, to break free from the status quo and say, man, I, not that we're not supposed to live uh, you know, with our families and, and doing the things we're supposed to do, we're supposed to work a job and all this, but that one level where you're at, at night in the bed going, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? What's my purpose? Because I just feel like I'm, I'm living just to live and then I'm going to die and that's it and I haven't really made a difference in this whole world. I don't want to die like that. I don't want to die like that. I'm like Jabez, like, hey, expand me, Lord. Use me. I don't care if I pump gas for a living. I want to know I'm serving you and you're using me to the fullest extent to that which I can be used. That's what I want. Jabez felt the same way. And he knew this too. Sitting in one place too long without expanding is pain. Some of y'all know what it feels like. Some of you are going, yep, I'm not going to nod too hard because then he knows I'm preaching at me. Let's, let's talk about this. Uh, who likes camping? Raise your hand. Anybody like camping? Great outdoors, whatever. I don't understand you at all. I like glamping myself. If I go camping, I want a generator. All right. I want a portable soft serve ice cream machine. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about, glamping. Let's go like a whole full mosquito tent that goes over the whole campsite, right? I'm just sitting in there. Oh, my gosh. Like, uh, like Tom from Parks and Rec. Anybody seen that? Like, that's right. I got a couple laughs for that. That's right. We watch TV as pastors. Oh, it's cool. I like glamping. But if you have a tent, own a tent, whatever, it's an eight person, six person, four person, you pull out this little tent and it's like this big, right? It's this big. But when you pull out that tent and start expanding, stretching it out, it's humongous. 
It's, it's, I, I can't believe how small they can package something that gets so big. Until you stretch out that tent, it's uninhabitable, obviously. And it's a picture of taking something that's flat, like our lives at time, and, and making room for people to have shelter and provision in what God can do in us. That's what I want to talk about today. Stretching is important. Stretching always comes in preparation, by the way. Stretching always comes in preparation. Um, Tiffany and I have two beautiful children together. And um, when, when she was pregnant, I should say when we were pregnant, because I gained a bunch of weight too, all right, somebody, but I'm not going to try and take credit for all that work. But I am like, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm a man, but I was kind of pregnant there for a minute. I was a little bit, not, not so much. I had to put the cocoa butter right here, right here. I was, Whew, it just was, it was really hard, you know, for a guy. Yeah. All the men said amen. It's hard too for us. Nope, nope, none, no, none, no amens. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany's up there like, move on, <laughs> move on. Okay. When, when we were pregnant, when Tiffany was pregnant, we started doing this thing. Like, we're getting the, the bedroom ready, right? I mean, anybody knows it's like, you got to get the bed ready. And I was involved in that too. You know, I, I like a good color scheme. Okay, I'm involved in this. Okay, so now I'm, I'm pregnant with her, and I'm nesting with her now, too. So I'm, like, involved with all this. But, but listen, you don't, you don't get the room ready after the baby's born. You get the room ready. Stretching happens in preparation. You, you prepare for what's coming, not for what's already here. So stretching sometimes can feel like a waste of time. More work than it's worth. Uh, there could be other things I'm doing with my time. Why do I need to do all this stretching? Why do I need to do all this growing? Well, we stretch in preparation for what's on the way, not for what's already here. He, God said, extend your tent. Spare no expense. I extend your home. This is important. Sometimes when we're being stretched, the devil comes along to say, well, you know, you just settle down. Just, just, just hang out there. You four, no more. Don't you like it? Like, this is good right here. You know everybody. You know what to expect. You know, there's no random people just messing you up. The devil will. He will. I'm talking about church, but I'm talking about you too. Like when, when you're about to stretch, he'll go, no, you don't need to do all that. Like you're here at church. I mean, what more do you really want? You know, it's like you're, you're good. Check. Check. You're good. You're fine. You're doing enough. No need to serve on a team. You know, that takes too much humility and submission and, and like commitment. You don't need to do all that. You don't need to give financially. You know, you don't need to invite your friends like their lives depend on it. You don't need to do that. Like, no, that, they'll probably be fine. They're just, you know, just, just worry about yourself. That's what the devil will say. Well, let me just tell you, the devil's a liar. He lies to us all the time. All of what I just said is false. And let me just be clear about this. Bef until we do these things, until we stretch ourselves, until we move forward in the ways that God has clearly shown us, there are some clear pathways to growth. The devil will chirp in your ear about how it's too hard, too much work, not worth it. But God would say to you, I'm trying to prepare you for what's coming. Your life has beautiful, wonderful things waiting for you to stretch out for it. Amen. Waiting. Sometimes people don't like to be stretched. That's why I have this rubber band. That's why I have them in all the bulletins, and I'm going to make you uh, put them on your wrist before you leave here. But I just want to <laughs> talk about a rubber band for a minute because I think it really paints the picture, it paints the picture well. We don't like to be stretched. You know it, how it hurts. You know, and it's like, think about how the rubber band feels. Ah, ah. If I was a rubber band, that's what, ah, ah, ah. it's like, ouch, man, that stinking hurts, man, it's crazy, but, uh, you know, it's, it's hard, it's uncomfortable, there's uncertainty, what if I join a life group and they don't understand me, you know, they don't accept me, no, what if I start giving and tithing and there's none left for me and the things that I really want to do? You know, I got to invest in my future. Like, what if I do that and it, ah, it hurts? You know, what if I really commit myself to God and his church and people judge me for it? People look at me like people at work, they look at me like freaking fanatic over here and ah, it hurts. It does hurt. It is a stretch. It is a stretch for us. Stretching is always uncomfortable. 
But this is, this is a rubber band at rest. And a rubber band at rest is never fulfilling its purpose. I'm sure it's very, ah, feels good. Oh, whew. This rubber band, is, its purpose is not fulfilled until it stretches around something to keep it secure, to keep it safe. Until a rubber band is stretched, it's not fulfilling its purpose. That's what its creator designed it to do. Do I really need to connect the dots? Your creator designed you to be stretched on an ongoing basis in life, to be stretched, to, to, to expand, to continue to grow to new limits. And God always stretches us before he uses us. You can write that down in your notes. I made a little blank for you so you can remember that later. God always stretches us. The stretching happens before he uses us in a mighty way. God always stretches us before he uses us. Why? Because we need to be stretched out before we can carry anything heavy. We need to stretch before we can carry anything heavy. Wise people know, you need to stretch before lifting heavy. I like to work out. I know you can't tell. You're looking at me like, all right, 165 pounds soaking wet. Good, good for you. Work out. You, uh, keep it up. I'm really good at stretching, though. <laughs> Wise people know, if you're going to lift something heavy, you better stretch out because you could get hurt. So God doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't want to hurt you. He wants you to be able to carry the thing that he has for you in life. So he wants to stretch you so that he can use you. Some of you have been scared of the stretch. Don't be scared of the stretch. It's leading for just a whole nother level of rest. Are you seeing that? The more you stretch, the more flexible you are. And the more God stretches you, the bigger you become. And your new rest is even bigger. And your new rest is even bigger. That one's free. It's not even in my notes. All right. God just gave that to me. So take that. That's a freebie for you. And then we hear from our pastor about how we can be stretched. Like those three main areas I keep talking about giving, life groups, and serving. It's almost always one of those three areas where, where God is asking us to, because those three areas talk about like the whole expression. Giving usually has everything to do with trust, everything to do with trust. So if we want to grow in our trust, Try giving a little. <laughs> try like, you know, when it's a dry season, the economy's down and you're like, give what? Said who? Huh. That's an exercise in trust. How about serving on a team? Well, that's a stretch in humility. Is this person, I'm a manager at my work. You don't tell me what to, nah, nah, nah. It's a stretch in humility. It's a stretch in humility. And how about life groups? It's a stretch in relationship and vulnerability where I, I got my four, no more. I just stay home every single day with my own family. Look, they, they'll be okay. One night a week, go out and make some friends, all right? They'll thank you later in life. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad, for having friends and showing me what it's like. It's a stretch, though. It's a stretch in relationships. So it's almost always one of those three areas, maybe more, maybe more than one. I know my church. I, mean, I, I know I, I endeavor to be better down here face to face with people than I am up here. And I, I like to think I know my church and it's one of those three areas. It's one of those three areas. And so that's, that's what I want to give you. So sometimes we don't want to stretch. It's just like before we have that breakthrough, but you know better. To carry more, you have to allow yourself to be stretched more and no one can do it for you. You have to choose to engage. All right. So I've got uh, these balloons here. I don't know if you noticed them. They're, uh, I got some <laughs> balloons on the platform. You see that? Very pretty. Very pretty. You should have seen me going in to go get these balloons. Who are these balloons for? Me. <laughs> going to the dollar store, they're like, oh, are you having a party? No. <laughs> Who are they for? For me. I'm just, you know, like, I was feeling good about myself. <laughs> Thought I'd give me some balloons. You ever feel like that, man? I just, you know what? I need a bouquet of balloons. I deserve it. I've been working hard, all right? I've been putting in overtime. Let's do it. Now, these balloons up here are filled with a little thing called helium. Y'all know about helium, right? There was a helium shortage recently. A balloon near helium, this is no good. This is no good. What has to happen for a balloon to be lifted up like that, to be so full of joy, to be like, party time? What has to happen? It has to be filled with the helium. It has to be filled with the helium, filled with the joy of the Lord. The Lord has to fill us up. We have to become filled. Fulfilled to the point of almost bursting. I don't even want to squeeze these things. Like when I was in there in the little balloon shop, I went to the Dollar Tree. Who am I kidding? I didn't go to no balloon shop. But still, when you're there, have you, raise a hand. Anybody been to a balloon shop or the Dollar Tree to get balloon? 
Nobody in the whole world. Come on. Show me, help me out here. I'm up here all by myself. Can't even get a hand raised. Who's seen somebody fill up a balloon with a thing and it's... And it's scary, right? It's like, dude, would you... No, that's enough. That's enough. Am I the only one that ever feels that way? It's like, no, 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 no. It's good. It's good, especially when I'm blowing one up right by my face. That's good right there. I don't want it to pop on my face, you know. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. If I'm preaching, I get to do what I want, all right? It's fun. It's fun. Now, being filled with, with, with the Lord's goodness and his, his grace, his mercy, being filled with his spirit is just like this. But if we, if we rest in this and refuse to be stretched, it, the longer we wait, the longer it, we start turning like this. I mean, who would you give these to? Who? Anyone ever seen The Office, you know? It is your birthday. Like, here, Tiffany. These balloons show you how much I care about you. But everyone knows, left alone, these turn into these. Guaranteed. Every single time, no doubt about it, all you got to do is leave them right where they're at. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything at all. All you have to do is leave them there and they will deflate on their own. The Lord talks about this. The Bible, the Bible talks about this. Ephesians 5, 18 says this, don't be drunk with wine, that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna talk about this word a little bit later on, hang in there, but I'm gonna tell you about it a little bit right now. That word means, and I'll, I'll prove it to you, it means continue to be filled. It's an ongoing action, continually filled. Not just one little, you know, little half balloon. Not just one little, not just one little thing. Not just one little thing, but all the time. Just, just, just give one time. You know, just serve on my own terms. You know, I'll pick up some garbage on the way in here and that's about good. Pfft, one little thing. How about just made one friend, pfft, I'm all set. That's all I need. Pfft, just one little, pfft. no, we need to continually. Pfft, continually be filled with God's spirit. Continue to be filled because one little, pfft, that's going to deflate just like that. Just like that. Think about a blow up jumper. Think about a blow-up jumper. I was thinking about this, and I was in my garage writing this message. I couldn't stop laughing every time I thought about it. Think about that. Think about a blow-up jumper. And you, anybody got kids, like young kids, like to jump in the jumper, and you, you have the generator. You rip the generator on, and it blows up, you know, and, and all four corners have like a Dora that are like, you feel, it fills up, and then it's nice and big, and it's like kind of bouncing around on all four corners, and the kids are jumping. They're having a good time. You ever had the, the generator run out of gas unexpectedly? <laughs> unexpectedly? Instantly, the kids are in there, they sink to the bottom, and Dora goes, bah, starts crashing in all four corners, bah. and then you're just like, oh my gosh, they're trapped in there, you run to the generator, womp, 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 open that thing up, starts, and then Dora, brrr, party girl again, she's feeling good, the kids are like, crying, <laughs> so scared, they're like trapped by Dora, like in all the rubber, it's like crazy, I mean, how, how quaint, of an illustration. We need to stay filled up with the Spirit of God, with God's next steps in our life. We got to stay being stretched. It doesn't take very long where life starts to feel like some of you are there now. And it feels like the world is caving in around you. Your relationships are breaking down. Your connection with God isn't what it used to be. And things just aren't right. Man, you got to be filled. Take a next step. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Let me, let me tell you something. Uh, number one is this. You can expand more than you think you can. Write that down in your notes if you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, pull out a pen and start taking notes right now. This is a great time to start doing it. Number one, you can expand more than you think you can. You might feel like a balloon filled up to, to, to fullness right there, and that, you, that, that balloon is filling up, filling up, and you're getting scared, but maybe that feels like, oh, I'm going to pop. I can't take anymore, but you're right here. God knows how much you could be stretched. 
He's your creator. He's your designer. He knows what you can handle. He knows how far you can expand before you're going to burst. He's not going to cause you to burst, but he is going to cause you to stretch. And I, th- I think sometimes he likes to push us to our limit. <laughs> It's not funny at all, is it? No, it's true. It's true. Sometimes he likes to push us. Matter of fact, it's almost every time. Every time we're stretched. Every time he's encouraging us to take a next step or you're hearing it from your pastor to take a next step. It feels like more than you can handle. But it's always one more and every time it's okay. The Bible talks about this. I don't know if you knew that. The Bible talks about that happening in the life of the disciples in 2 Corinthians 4. He says this, uh, Paul wrote this to a church. He said, through suffering, <clears throat> stretching, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus. That sounds stretching. So that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death, stretching, growing, expanding further than we think we can. Oh Lord, I'm gonna die. If I go to a life group, if I start giving, if I start serving on a team, oh, it's too much, Lord. I can't do it. But we feel that way. And I'm not making, I'm, I don't mean to make fun of you. I'm not making fun of anybody. I feel the same way. Okay, let's just level the playing field. I have places I need to stretch and I don't want to. It's true. It's true. I need to stretch in certain places and I'm making myself. So it's hard. But he stretches us further than we think we can because we serve Jesus. So the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. Like in that act of suffering, in that act of stretching and expanding, God is seen. God is seen. God's sacrifice is seen. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. What is he saying? He's saying our stretching leads to other people saving. When we get stretched, when we allow ourselves to be stretched, there's people who are going to go to heaven and not hell because we allow ourselves to be stretched. I know some of you are at like that beginning place, like when I pray for salvation at the end of the message, you're going to be ready for that. And you're going to be thinking, man, this is for me right now. But I, I cannot tell you soon enough that God wants to use you beyond you, that there's people out there who need you. God wants to use you to reach them. Our stretching, look at, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. Our suffering is what he said. Our suffering has led to eternal life for you. Our suffering is not just so that we get the next level. It's so that we're able to reach more people and expand our tent and go to that second service and go to the third and get a new place because it's not about, it's about people are gonna be here because there's people that you are gonna be able to reach that I'm not gonna be able to. Look, I'm not at your job. I'm not at your work. I'm not in your neighborhood. There's people that are counting on you to be stretched. It's, uh, no, I'm just going to move on. Number two is this. Write this down. You cannot rely on yesterday's inflation. You cannot rely on yesterday's inflation. Some of you are thinking, well, yeah, I did that already. I did that already. <laughs> well, it's time to do it again, y'all. It's time to stretch again because you got, a, you got another blow in you. You got another puff in you. All right, take it easy, Lifeline. I know what kind of church I'm talking to, all right? It's not, it's not that kind of, all right? It's the spirit of God. <laughs> Spirits of God, uh, you cannot rely on yesterday's inflation. Um, You can't live on yesterday's manna is another way to talk about this. Manna in the Old Testament was what God fed the people of Israel as they were walking around in the wilderness. And this is how manna worked. He gave it to them every day. And every day they had to go out and get it. They had to go out and get their little piece of bread every single day. And manna just means, what is it? And they were like looking at it like, what is this? And he's like, just go get it. All right, just go get it every single day. And you could, ne- you could never, this is just how God did it. I think he was trying to paint a picture for us. You couldn't gather too much and save it for the next day. You had to get it that day. You got your provision for that day by going out and getting it that day. Oh, what a picture that is for us in our devotional life. And we have to go seek God every single day. Manna was given every, and you can't live off yesterday's manna. We feel good for a while I know what it feels like. You feel good for a while. You come to a good church service and you're like, yeah, I got this. And then Monday morning, inevitably, rolls around. Every single week, Monday comes. And you wake up and it's everything you can do to not just check your email first thing, check Facebook first thing, social media, forget about Devos, forget about your thing. And then next thing you know, you're just like, Where, what happened to my life? Where, 
Where is my connection with God? I don't know. It's gone. It's, I don't know. It's just missing. Every single day, we have to remember to stay filled. That, that, uh, in Ephesians 5.18, let me tell you about that word. It's per, it, I hope it's pronounced pero. All right, I'm just a gringo doing the best I can with these Greek words, okay? I don't speak Greek, but I do know how to read a lexicon so I can figure out what it means. Pero, be filled. Ephesians 18, be filled. Pero. Pero, maybe it's like that. But it's a present verb. I know about language. It's a present tense verb, which means the verb tense where the writer portrays an action in process or a state of being with no assessment of the action's completion. What the heck does that mean? It means it's ongoing. Be filled with the Spirit every single day. Every day. You've got to seek Him every single day. There are no breaks. In the natural, this is easy to understand. Because has anyone been to the gym one time? Oh, yeah, I'm good to go. No, you, you, the only thing you'd notice after one time in the gym is how sore you are. That's the only thing you'd notice. You have to go every single day on routine, week after week, month after month, before you begin to see the results. Oh, you can eat your vegetables one day, really? And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. My gut health is all back to normal. Broccoli, one day, that's all you get, and that's your good day. No, of course not. You know you've got to make that a regular part of your diet. And the things that don't treat you well, you have to get those out. Every time, every day. So in the natural, it's so easy to understand. How come it's so hard to understand in the spiritual? In the spiritual, this means Bible. Every day, we've got to stay engaged in the Word, and nobody's going to do it for you. you you've got to choose on your own. I want to stay filled. I want to stay doing well in prayer, engaged in the church, giving, serving, grouping, those three things, giving, serving, grouping. These things we have to continue to do or else, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I feel, I feel really good about it. You want to be a Christian? You want me to pray with you? You mean get God in your life? Oh, it's very attractive. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to being as hyped up as you are. That's great. We need to remember to stay filled. I'm serious. I'm serious. This is important stuff. We, we, could t- we just go flat. It doesn't take long at all. Number three is this. Maximize your potential. Maximize your potential. Well, like I said earlier, man, I, I know my church. I know, when I'm looking around this room, I, I see your faces. I know your names. I know who you are unless you're new, and I can't wait to know you. I <laughs> can't wait to know more about you, but I know the potential that's in this room. I see you. I know what kind of gifting you have. I know what kind of potential you have. The, the, the potential in this room is astounding. It gives me butterflies. It gave me butterflies right now because I, I see you. I know what you're capable of, and I don't even have a, a minuscule portion of the sight that God has for you. Like, I only have a small measure. Tiffany and I, when we're looking around, when we're, when we're telling you, you can do this. Hey, serve on this team. Hey, learn to trust God in your giving. Hey, serve with, with this group. Get into a life group. When we're trying to get you, like, just helping you, God sees far more than we can, but we see it in you. Your potential is absolutely wonderful. Ephesians 2.10 says this, we are God's masterpiece. When I grew up in the Salvation Army going to church, I didn't... I was an adult already, but I got saved in a Salvation Army, and there was this guy, and every single week he said, God, don't make junk. He doesn't make junk. And that's, he said it every week, which was really important for me, because I felt like junk. And so every week I needed to hear it. You know, I'm a recovering addict. You know, I needed to hear that. I needed to be told. He, he made you a masterpiece. He made you special, near and dear to his heart. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. In other words, when you were made new in Christ, your potential was activated. But to do what? Peter said to Jesus, some of you might remember the story, you know I love you, Lord. Lord, you know I love you. Jesus was asking, do you love me? Peter's like, yeah, Lord, I love you. And this is what Jesus said to him. If you love me, you'd feed my sheep. In other words, when we, when we say we love God, God says, if you love me, you would engage in the need and, needs and nurture of my people because you'll love who I love. And I love the people who I have set apart for myself and I'm calling you, if you love me, feed my sheep. 
care about others, be a lifeline. We talk about outreach and inviting people. We talk about inviting people a lot around here. It's like, like it's a task to accomplish. Like it's a check mark. Like it's a, a, like it's a notch in our belt. You know, like we talk about inviting people a lot and it's very important that we do so, but not maybe for the reason that you think. Maybe evangelism is more important to God's heart than you think it is. Because it's the one thing he kept telling Peter to do. You love me? Well, then go after my lost sheep. I loved Tiffany's message last week. I thought the pictures were silly, but I loved the message. Absolutely loved it. And I've used this term, get to the middle of the flock. It's those sheep on the outside, getting them to the middle of the flock. I loved that. I absolutely loved it. I've used it multiple times since then. And I think it could just be language around here. We're, if we love God, if we claim to love God, Jesus says, well, then bring those sheep that are hurting to the middle of the flock where they're safe. Trusting God, relationships with other believers, serving on a team. Trusting God in our finances, which is the hardest place to trust God. Serving on a team, which takes humility and submission. And grouping up with people, which takes vulnerability and emotional intelligence. These are the three areas, hands down, every single time. To maximize our potential, you, you move in one of those three directions, or let me put it another way. I think the Holy Spirit's speaking to you already about which one you need to focus on the most, and maybe it's more than one. Maybe it's all three, and you're like, I'm not, Pastor, I'm not hardly doing any of that. You wouldn't say that to me. You're just thinking it. It's okay. We're a good church for you because we're just going to keep on, we're just going to keep on extending our hand out, you know, like a sheep, and we just got some carrots right here. We're just like, no, it's fine. Whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready, we'll be here, and we will love you and we will care about you, and we're hurt when you hurt, we, and we want you to be well. That's the heartbeat of this church. That's the heartbeat of the team that I serve with here at this church. We care about lost sheep. We care about evangelism more than a checkbox. We care about evangelism and, and inviting our, our friends and family to come be a part of a life-giving church more than a notch on our belt. Those are people. Those are sons and daughters of the Most High God that are going to hell if they don't have a relationship with Jesus. You've, we've got to remember this all the time. All the time. All right, I've got, I've got to go. Number four is this. Last, the last point is take a next step. So it's time. Pastor, all right, all right, you got me. What do I do? Please give me a, a tangible next step. Please tell me. So I, I will. I will tell you right now. Psalm 37, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fail for the Lord holds them by the hand. Lifeline isn't a hometown buffet. I just want to get that out of the way right now. We don't have macaroni and cheese next to the cottage cheese, next to the you know chicken wings, next to a slice of old pepperoni pizza, next to prime rib. No, 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 no. You're not just going to get whatever, whatever around here. We're more like an in and out. We do a couple of things, but we do them the best we possibly can. The Lord just told us we, we need to focus. These next four next steps, this is kind of how we, you'll learn about these even more in growth track if you want to come to step one, which is next month. Step two is today, which you can definitely join. I'm going to talk all about all of this right now. The first next step is this, is to know God. Obviously, that's the first one, right? To know God. And we, we focus on doing that on Sundays. So like, you're like, okay, what's that next step mean? I'm already here, pastor. What's up? Like you're preaching to the choir. Maybe, but maybe I just caught you on a good day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe I just caught you, you know, on your, the day that you're here, which is great. I love that. But I'm speaking to everyone here who hasn't yet made that commitment in their heart. Like, hey, weekend with my church family is priority. And I'm going to go hear God's word from my pastor every single week. And it's in my calendar. And I don't just flippantly back and forth. Like, that's a next step that you could take. And I, and I get it. I get it. Life is busy. I understand all of that. Believe me. 
I got a, a grown son who's 19 years old working a job, and I got two littler kids, six and seven. I know what it means to have a busy life, but there is a tangible next step to take a next step towards God through commitment on Sundays and to say, hey, this is a commitment for me. I'm coming every week. I'm, you know, unless I'm sick or out of town, I'm going to be there. And online, let me talk to you. I'm going to talk to you for a minute because there's some of you that are sick, There are some of you who are out of town, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to talk to you this way with all the technology, but there are some of you who aren't here, but you could be. I want to, I want to just encourage you. That's not God's best for you, that you're missing out on something right here in the room. There's people here in this room, even right now, that will be your best friends, that will be like mothers and fathers to you, that will be like brothers and sisters to you, and you will always be missing out on that as long as you keep that I know it's a lot easier. I know it's a lot simpler. But if, it's, if you're able, take this one next step. Maybe this is your next step to, to begin to come. And it's, it goes for all of us too because every single one of us needs to decide, man, Sunday mornings is for me. The next thing is this, and this is fi- it's called fine community. It's just how, what we call it here. That's how the language we use is fine community. And notice it's not just have, it's not saying have community. It's saying fine community. And we do that through life groups. We've talked a lot about that, but let me just, let me linger here for a second. This is a place where people who come on Sundays, this is a place where people who come and start to get engaged can find new community. Because here on Sunday, there's a lot of people here and we have two minutes for greeting time. It's like, you're not going to really meet anybody like that. Okay. You're not going to really get to know someone like that. That's why it's so important for every single one of us to decide here and now. Don't wait for February 5th. Sign up for your group now. We are going to start February 5th, we're going to start a new series. And all of our groups for six weeks are going to do the same content. We've never really done that before. I think it's really special. The whole church is going to come together around this one teaching idea for six weeks. I'm really excited about it. I really, really am. And the name of the series and the name of the book is called Who Am I? And it comes from this this really important concept of identity. Even Moses struggled, did you know? Moses was called to set all the, to take all the people out of slavery, to have this huge calling. And what was his complaint? God, who am I that you would use me in a mighty way? And I think every single one of us in different areas, we compare ourselves to others. We fail in life. You know, we're in different stages. And so as a parent, who am I? As a teenager, who am I? And we're going to go over this concept of identity, who am I, with all the teenagers, with all the grade schoolers, with all your preschoolers. Trust me, our teachers have come up with some great stuff, and they're going to move this thing forward. But then, of course, for all the adult groups, we're going to go over this together. Who am I? And we're going to find community around that idea. God has a plan and a purpose for you, and God has called you into, into better and greater things. The last one is this, is to get equipped. Maybe this is your next Maybe this is your next step. Get equipped. We do that through our growth track. This is where you discover your your purpose and learn what it means to be a real part of a life-giving church. It's reported that 87% of church-going believers don't know what their spiritual gift is. Like there's a list of spiritual gifts in the Bible. And if you just ask, nine out of 10 Christians would be like, I I think it's being fun. (laughs) We just don't know. We don't know it. We just don't know what it is. Hey, listen, that's a problem. That's a problem. Because if we don't know what your spiritual gift is, then how can you know how to run in your lane? That's why we do Growth Track is to equip you to be a part of this family, to be a part of this community, to serve on a team and to exercise our humility in that way, but also to learn about your personality and about your spiritual gifts so that you know that this is how God created me to be. Like he's created me to be a life-giving source for kids. Or maybe at the doors, you know, when people are walking in, they're coming in, they're, in their drive, they're driving in and they're, they're white knuckling their, their steering wheel. And God designed you to be the kind of person that's in the parking lot that just has that demeanor of disarming where people just start to feel safe around you. Or maybe it's, you know, something like serving on the worship team, whatever. We'll help you find it. We'll help you find out what your spiritual gift is and then we'll help you walk in it. That's through growth track. That's how we equip people. The last thing is this of course, is to be a lifeline. That's our ultimate goal for every single person, is to be a lifeline. And we do that through the dream team. We equip you to know what your spiritual gift is, but then 
We want you moving in that direction. We want you actually doing it. This is where you focus on others to make a difference in their lives. Even secular sociologists and psychologists agree that the highest form of living is not self-actualization. That's what it used to be, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Years and years ago, it ended on the top of the triangle with self-actualization. You know what that means? My career is fulfilled. My bank account is where I like it to be. I've got a nice retirement nest egg and I'm, I'm living my best life. That's the top. Well, guess what? Research went on, research went on and people were still unfulfilled at the end of their lives just fulfilling themselves. Sociologists and psychologists agree that it's not self-actualization that's the top. It's this word transcendence, which is fancy and, you know, textbook word for just meaning you're starting to make a difference in the world. Once you get to self, and we all need that. It's a need. It's a human need to feel secure in your career, in your family, to be safe there, to have everything you think you need, but it continues. And that's what we want for everybody here is to be, cons- be secure in themselves enough to say, you know what? It's time to go be a lifeline in the community. It's time to be a lifeline in my church. It's time to start serving. It's time to start going. God knew it from the beginning. Sociologists figured it out, but God already knew when he asked Solomon to write this in Proverbs 11, the generous, those who give, those are the ones who are gonna prosper. Those who not just achieve their own self, but those who live open-handedly to give to others, those that live to give, they will prosper. And listen to this, those who refresh others, That is, those who live outside themselves, those who don't hoard for themselves, but choose to invest their time, their talent, their finances, not to build their own kingdom, but to build the kingdom, those people, they themselves will be, everyone say it with me, refreshed. Those are the ones who will be refreshed. Those who live outside of themselves, those who say, it's not about my kingdom. Yeah, I want to be secure enough in myself so that I can go serve in the Lord's army and say, hey, Lord, here I am, your humble servant, use me. That's my fullest. I know what it feels like to go in that place and to to get saved and to try and figure things out on my own and I had plenty of money and I wasn't going to any church. I was saved, wasn't really going to any church for a couple years, but I came to a place in my faith and I was challenged enough as something switched on the inside of me and that's my prayer for you, something that would switch on the inside of you, something switched where I, I didn't want to just find a wife anymore. I didn't want to just find a girl anymore. I didn't want to just find a job anymore. I didn't want to just find what the world would call success. Something switched to me where I could, I would go into interviews and be like, yeah, I can't work Thursday, can't work Wednesday, can't work Sundays. Yeah, because I'm busy at my church. They would laugh at me. They would laugh at me. They'd be like, it's going to be kind of tough, Mr. Jones. I'm like, I don't care. I'll just go somewhere else. I I don't care. Because I came to a place inside me where I, I was about my father's business. And that doesn't mean everyone's going to become a pastor and take a vow of poverty. It's not at all what it means. It just means there's something that switches inside of us that says it's not about my kingdom, it's about his kingdom. And that, in fact, is how we get refreshment. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. But it's a stretch. But your purpose and potential is in the stretching. I'm giving each one of you one of these rubber bands to put around your wrist as a reminder God wants to stretch you. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you and he wants to refresh you, but it comes in the stretching. Matter of fact, the last blank in your notes, stretching is refreshing. Stretching is refreshing. In and of itself, might take a little getting used to, but when you learn to look at it that way, oh, Lord, stretch me, use me. And maybe some of y'all's first stretch is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Because maybe, maybe maybe he's even savior right now. Like you're not going to hell when you die. Like you're good, you're going to heaven, it's all. But there's something that needs to happen because it says Lord and savior. So savior, but then there's Lord and king. Maybe a next step and a stretch for some of you is to say, I'm not only, I don't always just believe in you, I will do what you tell me I need to do because you're my king, you're my Lord. I'm submitting to you here and now. If that's your next step today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you to take that step. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? This is a sacred moment, so let's, let's be sensitive to God's spirit as he's here with us now. 
And I just want to pray over anyone who, that's, that's you. You feel like, I, maybe he's not even your savior yet. Maybe you've just been around, but you haven't truly let him in. So we'll make this all inclusive, that he would be your savior and your Lord. Maybe it used to be true. Maybe he used to be your Lord, used to be your savior, but along the way, man, something has slipped. You have gone flat in your faith. I want to include you in that prayer as well, if that's you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray over every single person here that their hearts would be open, their mind would be open, that their spiritual eyes would be open to see you. You are pursuing them. You are right before them, just waiting for them. So if that's you in this place and you're you're ready to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior, just lift your hand for me. Nobody's looking around. It's all right. It's time. Don't be bold. I see you and you and you and you and you and you and you. I see you. More importantly, God sees you. Church, let's pray together. Nice and loud, nice and bold if it's you. Pray it right after I say it. Say, Father God, I give you my life. I give you my heart. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we celebrate those who made that decision today?